Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about universities and why people go to a university when software development is changing so frequently. So let's get into it. Well, the, uh, the question in question was pretty much that. How, uh, why do people go to a university and learn computer science when software engineering is changing all the time? And the short answer is pretty much because the knowledge that you are learning in the university is a lot older than you think most of the time. And software engineering and software development may change very frequently, but not the core knowledge. It's usually the thing that stays the same. Let me explain. So one of my favorite sayings or one of my favorite claims in software engineering is something that is related to front-end. Now front-end developers or for people who dislike JavaScript and so forth, depending on your viewpoint, there is a saying where we state that front-end is chaos. It's always changing. JavaScript is moving faster than anything else and it's a hassle. Like we call it, I think the term is JavaScript exhaustion. And to a point, this is absolutely true. But what's interesting about it, I think that, and kind of this gets lost in translation many times, is that it's not really the fact that everything changes all the time if you know what the stable parts of front-end tooling is and what are the unstable things. Now, if, you're sh if, you, if you are a fairly, well, let's call it mid-level junior profile within front-end and you're kind of just trying to learn the ecosystem, you will realize, you, you will feel this way, most likely. You will feel that there's so many things going on, there's so many frameworks, there's so many libraries, there's so much going on all the time. There's every, every single day, there's hundreds and hundreds of packages that can go up on NPM for different things, right? But when you've been doing it for long enough, at least from my perspective, I kind of look and I see, well, yeah, there's a lot of noise going on over here about for with a lot of packages that who cares if they're being developed, but the stuff that everybody depends on, the stuff that pretty much everybody in the industry is using on their daily, on the daily grind, uh, that's pretty much the same. <laughs> and it has been the same for a few years now. It's not changing that much. There's a lot of noise that I will give you, but there's not much change in the stable ecosystem. That's the insight that I want, if there's anything you're gonna take away from this little rant of mine, it should be that, that it, the sh industry changes all the time. But what's important is not, it, you have to let go of the idea that everything that changes has importance and it doesn't. This is one of the main reasons why I fight with people over Svelte, Vue, or um, some other JavaScript framework that, I mean, or whatever new framework we're gonna have in a few months. Like, what I'm saying is that just because something is new, just because something changed, that doesn't make it core knowledge. And that's the key thing here, core knowledge. What the hell is core knowledge? Well, I'm glad you asked. Core knowledge is, at least from my definition, knowledge that is critical for your success as a software engineer. That is what core knowledge is. Core knowledge is something that we consider within IT to be something that pretty much everybody should know about. Now, not every single person is gonna know every single thing that someone can define as core knowledge, but there are some building blocks where it's just good form to know about it. It's the same thing as being reasonably, uh, in a reasonable fashion, in tune with your environment to know about basic politics or basic social structures. There are certain cultural aspects to our society that are considered core knowledge. An example would be, you know, we greet each other by clasping hands. Well, not in Corona times, but you hope, I hope you get my drift. There, there are certain things that it's just, you think of it as like just normal. You don't even consider that somebody wouldn't know about it. That is core knowledge. Now, tooling is not always core knowledge. Some tools is part of core knowledge and some tools are not. 
every single changing library out there that does something like, I don't know, left pad or con gives you colors in your console and stuff like that. This is noise, if you ask me. This is noise. There are some people who use it and some people who don't. They don't care. Like it, it's not something that's going to be considered core knowledge. Core knowledge is usually something that you test people for when you're hiring them and it's something that you're probably going to see on pretty much every job application. To inf let's take front and as an example now. A few examples of core tools to know about in Frontend is going to be Jarn or NPM or Node.js as an example or React, Angular, Vue, etc. etc. Right? Depending on which framework you're going to go into. Knowing things about CSS, that's core knowledge. It's HTML, that's core knowledge. You have to use these things in order to be able to do your job more or less. So in a university situation, you can think of it as one level higher, where we're not, not now talking about necessarily tooling. Some universities teach, teach you tooling. They teach you different programming languages and different web server stuff and all kinds of stuff, right? But there's another layer, because we're talking about tooling now, but the layer that is even higher than tooling is mental tooling. In other words, core knowledge related to things such as algorithms, object-oriented programming, functional programming, things of this nature, computer science related things where you actually learn how a computer works and you learn how the different parts of a computer interact with each other and what the logic is, what an operating system is, etc, etc. These things are constant, pretty much. It's very, it's not that common that this changes all that much and that is why people go to a university. This is a way for you to get the foundation knowledge, the theory and the core skills, the core mental tools to your mental toolbox, if that makes sense, before you go in and learn all the tools and so forth. Now there's nothing wrong with going in and learning a bunch of tools, but what I'm saying is that the university has a relevancy because it focuses almost exclusively on the academics. That's not, not always a good thing. In, the, in, in, a good, in a good curriculum, you should mix it. You should be learning both the theory and the course, core tools, but each university is different. So what I want you to take away from this is that the reason why people go to a university, even though the software engineering, in, uh, software and engineering is always changing, is because the p things that you learn in a university is usually fairly stable. Not always because every school is different, but that's the idea that you can learn the theory because it pretty much stays more or less the same. It doesn't change as frequently. I mean, if you look at functional programming and object-oriented programming principles, that they are well over 30, like they're like we we're talking about concepts that have been around for many, many decades at this point. And the core tools are usually core things that you can learn on your own or things that a, a school, depending on which school you go to, is going to teach you. But all the fluctuation, fluctuation that you are talking about, that's also part of it. That's the experimental phase in IT where everybody's just moving around trying different things. And these things doesn't mean, just because things are changing in that area of IT, that doesn't mean that that's a, this is required knowledge for everybody who wants to work as a software developer. That's happening a little further back. If you want to be bleeding edge about things, then maybe you need to know about this stuff. And before you know it, some of this stuff is going to go from fluctuating like a bunch of particles just moving around to being stably embedded into a crystal or some, you know, some more stable construct. So. I hope that makes sense to you. Just because stuff is moving around, that doesn't mean that every change is relevant to you. So going to a university is actually is sometimes a very good investment, or going to school is a good investment because the stuff that stays pretty much the same, you can learn in, in, that, in that area. For the bleeding edge stuff, you have to go out on your own mostly. Have a great day.